Hey, hey, how's it going? Welcome back. This is Amy. And what my thing move? Sorry, technical, technical, technicals that I apparently can't control. Um, yeah. So we are back. It is Thursday. And doing this later than I wanted to because I had to run some errands today. And I've been sick for the last few days. I had this sinus cold, sinus infection, whatever it was. Like Tuesday, I was totally out of it. I was like in bed all day. Um, yesterday, I actually got out of bed, I was sitting around at least. Um, yeah, I don't know what it was. Felt terrible. Today I'm feeling a lot better. Like I said, I had to go run some errands, pick up some groceries, got a coffee. And now we're in our tank top because it's getting hot again. And this is my Jaws shirt. My sister got me my tank top. Um, I don't know if she got it maybe last year. I don't know. I usually watch Shark Week every year. This year it's kind of up in the air because my TV app that we have for our TV Fubo has had decided to not, um, well, they didn't get the licensing for the Discovery Channel, so all the Discovery Channels are off our Fubo, which last year I thought Disney had Shark Week, but we'll find out. But it's the Olympics this summer. There's a lot of stuff going on. So, but today I wanted to talk about this book. Mother Daughter Murder Night. I'm currently reading. I'm at like page 92. And I do have the large print because that's what was available at um I don't know why I'm going there. At the library. So it is pretty large. <laughs> I still I do well, I probably yeah. Unfortunately, I still need my glasses to read it. That's what's sad. But uh yeah, this is like 543 pages, so I don't know if the normal print, it's smaller, it's less pages than that, or what, but, um, yeah, so I'll read you a little synopsis. So it says, Lana Rubicon is proud of her keen intelligence, impeccable tastes, and the L.A. real estate empire she's built. But when she finds herself trapped in a sleepy coastal town with her adult daughter Beth and teenage granddaughter Jack, which is short for Jacqueline, Lana is hoping that boredom won't kill her before the cancer does. When Jack, tiny in stature but fiercely independent, happens upon a dead body while kayaking nearby, the Rubicon women are thrown into chaos. Beth thinks Lana should focus on her recovery, but Lana has a better idea. Find the murderer, protect her family, and prove she still has power. Together, the women uncover a web of lies lurking beneath the surface of a community populated by folksy conservative conservationists and wealthy ranchers, but as their snooping advances into dangerous territory, the headstrong Rubicon women must do the one thing they're always, they've always resisted, depend on each other. So yeah, so this is good. This is, um, so Jack, the teenager, she works for this kayaking outfitters place on this waterway that's literally right behind their house. And, um, she takes a kayaking group out one morning and they happen along this dead body in the in the water and so um as it so happens the cops come back and question her and the one cop there's a guy cop and a lady cop and the guy cops like coming at her really hard which it's like i don't i don't know that that was necessary she's 15 for one and he's pointing the finger like She's the one that this adult, it's an adult male that was, they're saying was murdered now, um, that she was been capable of murdering this guy. And um, her grandma's like there with her and like trying to, you know, put, put a damper on their hostile <laughs> interrogation of the granddaughter. But, um, yeah, so that's where I'm at now. I really like it. I enjoy it. It's about this three generations of women living under one roof. And they, um, the grandma is, I think she's supposed to be in her 60s. She's not, she's not that old. 
I mean, my God, I'm 54. It's really just around the corner. Um, but um, she seems bitchy and like, like very, um, you do what she says by her rules and everything like that. But when it comes down to it, it seems that she's, um, she can be very protective of her family. And that's what she's trying to do for her granddaughter right now, it seems like. So her bitchiness is kind of, her controlling nature is kind of working for her in this bit. So that she's not going to let her granddaughter be taken advantage of and bullied and um, made out to be, uh, to do something that she didn't. Um, so anyway, that's where it's at right now. And the writer is Nina Simon and is a former NASA engineer, slam poet, and museum director. She lives with her family in Santa Cruz Mountains, and this is her first novel. So I did see an interview with her a few days ago on, um, she was at the, it was on YouTube. She was at the, I think it's, it's a bookstore in Arizona. I want to say Scottsdale, Arizona, the poisoned pen. Um, they have a lot of authors come through there and give interviews, which is really cool. Cause I seen, I seen a, um, YouTube video with Jeffrey Deaver and, um, Karen Slaughter was there and I just seen this one, which was, it's been a few months back since, um, uh, Nina was there. But anyway, those, that's a good, um, that's a good thing to watch on YouTube. It's the poisoned pen. Um, I think that's the name of the bookstore. And I believe it's in Scottsdale, Arizona. But anyway, they have authors come through and give inter live interviews. So I'm like, oh, maybe that would be something I could put on my bucket list to do. If I could travel to Arizona, that would be stopping at that bookstore and maybe uh, catch an author interview. That would be fun. So anyway, that's where I'm at right now. And um, June's coming up pretty quick, even though we just got into uh, May. But one of the themes or co-themes I'm thinking about doing for June for the book, my book possibility slash TBR is, um, again, I've said this in previous, in a previous uh, or multiple um, book videos, but June 6th is going to be the 80th anniversary this year of D-Day, which is June 6th, um, happened in 1944. And um, it was a landing on the beaches of Normandy. It was the beaches of Normandy, Omaha, and Utah. It's on the coast of uh, coast of France. So they landed in France, the Allied troops, and to um, to push through France and crush the Nazi army. Uh, yeah, which, uh, happily to say, due to our freedoms and democracy that they hold in the Europe and here now, um, you may or may not agree, but they pushed through and they won. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so there's a couple of books that I found on Libby that I'm interested in getting for that book month and also the co so the co so the theme would be d-day slash summertime and a couple of the books one book i have on hold um i it became available but then i put it on hold again so hopefully i'll get this like at the end of may the beginning of june it's called d-day the battle for normandy by anthony beaver uh, I don't know why I'm turning it, but yeah. So that one looked good, and that's an ebook. And then I also, there was one, I don't think it was available right now. I'll look it up. It was called D Day Girls, um, about the women who was hired to fight, I think, in the resistance in France. And I, it's by Sarah Rose. Um, oh, see. Right now I can get it. It's available, but I don't want it right now because I want it for June. Let's see, and they have the ebook and the oh shoot, I'm always hitting the wrong button. And the audio, audio is ten hours. 
if I borrow it, I wonder, can I put it on hold? Oh, I don't know. We're not going to mess with it. But this is the book. D-Day Girls. That looked really, that looked really cool. Uh, and it says, The spies who armed the resistance sabotaged the Nazis and helped win World War II. So, it says, okay, I'll read you this little synopsis here. In 1942, the Allies were losing, Germany seemed unstoppable, and every able man in England was on the front lines. To set Europe ablaze, in quotes, in the words of Winston Churchill, the Special Operations Executive, SOE, whose spies were trained in everything from demolition to sharpshooting, was forced to do something unprecedented. Recruit women. 39 answered the call, leaving their, li leave leaving their lives and families to become saboteurs in France. In D-Day Girls, Sarah Rose draws on recently declassified files, so it's based on a true story, diaries and oral histories to tell the thrilling story of three of these remarkable women. Therese André Borel, a scrappy and streetwise Parisian who blew up oh, who blew up power lines with the Gestapo hot on her heels. Odette Sansom, an unhappily married suburban mother who saw the SOE as her ticket out of domestic life and into a meaningful adventure. And Lise de Basic. I'm probably mispronouncing that, sorry. A fierce independent independent member of French colonial high society and the SOE's unflappable queen, together they destroyed train lines, ambushed Nazis, plotted prison breaks, and gathered crucial intelligence, laying the groundwork for the D-Day invasion that proved to be the turning point in the war. Rigorously researched and written with razor-sharp wit, D-Day Girls is an inspiring story for our own moment of resistance, a reminder of what courage and the energy of politi politically animated women can accomplish when the stakes seem incalculably incalcul high. Anyway, so that one I came across looking at the Libby app for books on D-Day, and that sounds really cool. I'm really, really, really wanting to read that one, and I might, I don't know if I'm going to put the I can't borrow it right now because I got too many in my cart. But um, yeah, D Day Girls. That's definitely one. That might be my book of the month for um June, but I'm not sure. But yeah, definitely going it gonna get it somehow. And um yeah. So and then for the summertime theme, which like I said, the D Day slash summertime is the theme for June, because summer's coming. And I had, um, go back. I wanted to read the Abby Jimenez. I can't spell it. Jimenez. Okay. We're going to, yeah, I'm saying I didn't spell it right. I know I didn't spell it right. I spelled it right before. Try. It's not even giving me clues on my thing. Maybe. Maybe not. Okay. It was called Summer. Summer. Summertime. Let's just put in summer. Sorry, we're in a long pause. Just talk amongst yourselves, and uh, we'll get back to you in just a second. As soon as our technical difficulties Lord, are maybe I'm spelling your first name wrong. Nope. Just just for the summer that's what it's called just for the summer by abby jimenez god there 
So that one looked like a good summer read. So I don't know if I'm going to get that one June because it said it's like several months out. So there's six copies, 204 people waiting. Yeah. I'm going to have to try for the library. Or I've heard, I've heard from several booktubers, like a handful. Um, and I, th I haven't came across one yet that really didn't like it. I've, everybody was been pleasantly pleased and ha happy that they read it and they gave it at least, I want to say at least a four star. I don't think it was below that. It could have been three and a half. I don't know. I think there's been at least four stars for this. But if you go on Goodreads, um, and I can spell things just for the summer. Apparently, it's part of your world number three. I guess there's a series. I don't know. Um, it's gotten so on Goodreads. That I'm say I'm seeing right now it says it's a four four point four eight out of five, so out of ninety eight thousand six hundred forty five ratings, the fifty eight percent is five stars. So that's that's good. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's one I want on my list for June too. So, but yeah, we'll talk about more what's in my June um, reading. I like to call it reading possibilities now, because if I say TBR, I feel like I get too much pressure that I have to go through all these books that I want to read. And then I get sidetracked and I want to read another book that's not on the list. Uh, so that's the trouble I've been causing myself. Um, so if I just give myself a list of possibilities and then I get to pick from those and then what I read, I read and what I don't, I don't. And no pressure. It's just all fun. It's fun. You're supposed to have fun. You're supposed to enjoy it. You're not supposed to have pressure and get stressed out. It's just, it's a, for me, YouTube's videos are supposed to be fun. No pressure. It's supposed to be relaxing, anxiety free. That's, I wanted to do it because I enjoy reading. I enjoy hearing about other people's uh, takes on books and just put my thoughts out there and what I want to read and what I'm reading and then to have filter in some other little um, daily or life stuff that I do that I'm interested in. It, it's fun and I enjoy it. And the minute it's not fun and I'm not enjoying it and it's too stressful and I'm like pulling my hair out, then I'm not going to do it. So <laughs> cross your fingers and pray that <laughs> I still enjoy it for a long time um, if you enjoy the video. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, so I just wanted to give a quick. Um, I just, sorry, it's, my phone went off. Um, a quick update on what I'm reading, which is Mother Daughter Murder Night, which is going really well. I'm enjoying it so far. Um, I really like the character of Jack. Um, she's a spunky, independent, you know, responsible 15 year old. And we're going to see if she still is responsible and spunky <laughs> at the end of the story. But, uh, yeah. So I hope you have a good rest of your day. Uh, the weekend's coming up. You have a good weekend. Stay safe. Mother's Day is coming up on Sunday. If you don't know, FYI, um, if your mom's no longer here, I'm sorry. Um, I hope you have some good memories. And, um, for those of you moms out there and you're on good terms, um, you know, stay safe, be cool. Your mom still needs you. Okay? So you have a good one. Happy weekend. Happy Mother's Day. And uh, we'll see you back here. If you cross your fingers and hope, have high hopes, we'll be back on Tuesday. Okay? Thanks for watching. Bye.